right, so today we are going to pick up something I told myself I would never buy, ever, because I have used this one before and uh, it's not a pleasure to use. It's functional, but not a pleasure. And you see in the title, so you know what I am buying. Uh, it's a Chinese wheel loader. And uh, I told myself I never want to buy anyone like that because they are slow, they are not very comfortable to drive and uh, they rust away but a friend of mine got one i have borrowed it earlier used it at home and uh, he was getting rid of it now and i got it at a, at a really good price so i couldn't say no but it doesn't run so that's what we are doing now we're going down to see if we can make it start if we make it start we will drive it home uh, if it won't start we'll go back to it later sometime but Right now we are just going there, take a look at it and uh, see what we can do and see what we are buying. <laughs> but I got it really cheap, 15,000 crowns. That's not much for a functioning wheel loader. That's not starting. But anyways, it's not much. So it was a deal I couldn't say no to. I don't know yet what I will be using it for, but I will probably find something to use it for. So that will be great. All right, let's go take a look at it. There it is. I will uh, go and investigate a little bit, see what I can see, and uh, yeah, I will take a closer look on it. So, I've been searching a bit, and he told me that before it stopped, it had a peak in the charging, and uh, probably the regulator in the alternator is broken, and that has broken this re relay part here. So, there is no power going between this. So, if I short this out with these power cables, I get power to everything and I can turn the start starter engine and everything so I just need to work a little bit more with this and then we probably can get it fired up and take it home. Alright, it is running so let's get it home. My suspicion was right, just connected through without a relay and everything worked. A little bit starter fluid and it was up and running. Okay, so I got the cheapest wheel loader money could buy almost home uh, I didn't get to film too much since I was at someone else's place and uh, yeah I was more anxious to get it home than filming a lot there so I thought we could take a little closer look at it now it's seven years old I think it has 300 hours on the meter uh, it has not been used much the guy that had it used it for clearing snow at his own driveway only I borrowed it a few times earlier just to clear snow here at home when I didn't have uh, the tractor in order or something like that. So yeah, uh, it's like the Chinese loaders. It has a lot of rust places. It's missing its mirrors. There are something up with lights, but as the, electro uh, as the electronics doesn't work, I haven't figured or looked at that even. Uh, can see the muffler is rusted off and uh, yeah else what I've done uh, I just put these two together uh, they are normally going into this I think this is electronic power switch so the ignition key is sending power here and this is connecting these two so I just did it manually and when I connect this together everything has power because one of these is coming from the battery the other one is going to the rest of the electric electronic system um, the problem is the alternator is charging way too much so it was putting off something like 29 volts when it was just idling so that means going higher more rpms it would be even higher than that so i just disconnected one line for going home so i didn't break anything else and I do think the ignition key is broken because it doesn't do anything. See inside. So now I have it connected. See the battery is showing 22 volts, but ignition key either turns it off or on or anything. So for starting it, I'm just uh, preheat a little bit and then I'm just using a screwdriver to shorten out the starter engine so let's just give it a little bit preheat here see if we can get it running it has been standing now for a week or two week I think something like that 
and else it's yeah it doesn't have much wear but it is a Chinese loader so okay and then just short out the pos whoops, positive and see okay this connection isn't very good I think we will get it some starter fluid or something like that. Alright, a bit of starter fluid. Let's see if that helps it start. Should have something to suck on. Luckily I got the screwdriver with the wheel loader because that's not much left. Should uh, should get some starting function running here so um, okay I will just test and see if this one is working. If it's working it's okay then we can connect everything here and just make a loop for the positive connection and make everything back but if this one did get broken when it got way too much power charge uh, when he was using it. Uh, I can just put in a manual one and just turn it over with the key. That's also easy enough. Okay, now I just took everything apart here and connected just some alligator clamps and we can, oh, we can hear here. So this one is working, it's no problem. So it doesn't just, uh, I think the problem is it doesn't get signal from the ignition key that you are supposed to turn on. You can see when I do this, the light gets on. Yeah, marking lights up there also. So, let's see. So, now we have power on. You can see we have lights everywhere. Or not everywhere, but where they are working. Let's see if the ignition key got anything more life in it. Yeah, it's actually... The ignition key is working, okay? Okay, so I just wanted to test before I put the connections back on. And we can see there is no signal between it now, but... If I give it power, you can hear it clicking, and we have a connection between it. So, uh, it's just missing the positive signal that is coming in here, so I have to search for that and find out where it is. Uh, it could be a fuse, it could be a relay, I don't know. Uh, but I think this one is coming di directly from the battery, and I can see that someone has been installing some new wires that are going back here some time earlier but eh, that's something to figure out i have a new alternator now so we can change this one out that's something we need to do and uh, yeah so since i haven't searched for how to disconnect the batteries i just went with some tape over the extension all right so so i just need to give it power from here and see you. It's clicking. All right, so now the relay is on through my jumper cable. Okay, so I see the lights is turning on. Okay, it's a blinking lights. That is not blinking, <laughs> they are just lighting up. Okay, but I still... I don't get anything here to the ignition. Like earlier, I had the blue lights and the voltage and everything. Not sure how that went away. Okay, so we can see here now we are only reading 12 volts and uh, as soon as I turn the ignition it goes off so 
it is safe to say I have fiddled around a little bit with the relay or the power breaker back there and it's not functioning correctly. So I could probably take it up and see if we can clean it or I can just put a manual switch back there. That means you have to go the back and turn it off every time because you can see now with the uh, when when I have the jumper cable back there the ignition doesn't shut off the machine anymore but you can also see as soon as I put some kind of uh, load on it the power breaker back there can't handle it so there I'm running the heating and as soon as I try to start it it goes off so there is not going enough current through there so okay let's uh, see if we can get it off <laughs> Luckily we just put the cables back on, so yay. All right, I just turned off the camera. I could see the voltage go up to 24. Uh, the fan is working and it's actually turning the engine. So let's heat it a little bit and see if we can uh, get everything running. But that is the power breaker back there that is the problem right now. And the alternator is charging too high.
power of the heat gun. But I think we are doing something with that throttle cable. It will get old pretty quick if we have to do it like that, that every time. Okay, let's uh, let's see how is it charging now. 25 volts. I don't think there's anything wrong with the alternator. Let's go test it, see what it can do, because all the lights are working actually. Uh, the rear view camera ain't working and uh, the blinkers are just lighting up, they are not blinking. So that's just probably a relay there, but let's go see what it can do. And uh, then we can keep an eye on the charging at the same time, so it doesn't change the alternator for nothing. We loader is warming up. I just used the Povelco to clear out some snow in front of the garage ports and uh, yeah I went out of power last time when we was testing the wheel loader. Uh, it works great. Uh, there are three faults on it that I could find. Uh, the windows wiper doesn't work 
uh, the power switch that I had to shorten uh, last time to get it running uh, it is missing the signal power so that we could fix easily with just a new cable for it or something like that and the backup camera ain't working so other than that everything is working actually uh, yeah one more four faults uh, also the turn signals they are not blinking they are just lighting up so it's probably the relay that is a problem but let's just continue testing it now since I couldn't film anything last time out of power and uh, clear the snow that I have here and I will just pile it up for the tractor and then I will use the tractor to move it because this bucket is a lot bigger than that bucket so Okay, so when the title says I bought the cheapest wheel loader I could find, uh, let me just clarify, I did not search for it. Uh, this was my friend's wheel loader, as mentioned, that he was selling and I got for a good price. So it was more like the wheel loader found me with an, an insanely good price. Uh, these wheel loaders are under $15,000 new. So that's pretty amazing. And uh, also, like I bought it under $1,500 I bought it for so that's really cheap for a wheel loader and we can hear now the heat gun did its work so and I still don't know what I will do with it actually uh, I have a bucket for dirt for it and I have some forks for it also haven't picked it up yet but uh, that I got and uh, yeah I, I think we will just fix up the faults there are the five of them and uh, let's Let's see what we will do with it. Maybe we can use it for something in the summer also. So, who knows? But let's now uh, try and clear some snow with it since it's the uh, throttle is thawed out.
let's take a look at it. So this is snow bucket. I think this could be twice the size without any problems at all. Uh, you can see this is something I know is breaking a lot on these wheel loaders. Something of this in this area is breaking. Uh, this one looks a little bit flimsy to me. But we can also see there are some rust here, so there could be some cracks forming here. Uh, yeah, and you can see the hydraulic rams are rusting away. So we'll buy some uh, tape with the grease on to have here. That helps a lot. See the same here also, but luckily they are mostly standing inside the life this one I've had. Looks like it. Uh, as mentioned, 300 hours, it ain't much. Uh, here is the hydraulic oil tank. Uh, yeah, there is no slack in the turn uh, in any of this, so that's really great. It does have a bit of rust around here and there. Uh, as we saw earlier, the exhaust is rusted off. Uh, but all the lights are working. Actually, all the lights are working. That's really impressive, except the turn signals. And uh, you can see here is a diesel tank and uh, also a lot of rust. And there is some other tank down there with the drive shaft. So I think it's something for the converter or whatever is driving this one. I haven't checked it out really, really good yet. And there are hydraulic locking pins for the bucket. So you are just releasing the bucket from inside the wheel loader. That's really great. So yeah, and it's, and it's all halogen lights on it. That's something we need to do something about. And uh, uh, else, what I can say about these ones are uh, they don't have very good traction. That is one problem. Uh, the traction is terrible. Uh, it's only spinning on one back wheel here and one front wheel here, or changing it about. There is not all wheels turning and there is no lock, differential lock on it or anything. So it does just spin on one wheel. So it's not very good traction on it. Uh, the comfort riding it is a lot of noise, but with, we have uh, hearing protection with radio, that's just no problem. Uh, the comfort is not very good, and it doesn't do uh, good speeds neither, but that we will test later. Alright, so I am calling this part one. I uh, was planning to do more in this video, but I see the time is flying away, so instead of making an hour long video about a Chinese wheel loader, I will make it in two parts. So. This was part one, get a little bit to know the wheel loader. Next part we will start with the problems it has. And uh, yeah, I thought it was five, it's more. But more on that, next part, check it out. Thank you for watching.